Episode 223, How Real Estate Agents Can Eclipse. See what we did there? Uh, this past week, we had the eclipse. Eclipse. Past sales records. We're going to get started right now. It was cool. <laughs> Twenty forty nine in Walt Disney World. Yep, let's go on through Orlando. How old will we be? Twenty forty nine. What is it? Yeah. Twenty five years. I will be seventy, boys. I don't think you're allowed to go to Disney World then. It's seventy. Yeah, get so. get oh, up I'm on that mic. Yeah, sorry, I'm, oh, you're rookie move. I'm talking there. to two. I'm talking to two people here. I'm screwing up. Yeah, yeah. All right, episode two twenty three today. Uh, look, we're using that pun. How real estate agents can eclipse past sales records. Um, but first, before we get started, you already know what we got to do. We got to thank these sponsors because we got to get paid the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right. We know Mortgage Mike is just paying the big bucks to be on this number one spot and he's slinging loans left and right. Uh, make sure that check clears because it's coming up on the 15th. I got uh, a tobacco story really fast. We were talking about potentially buying the UFC 300 this week and then we agreed that the main event was going to be on too late and we'd rather be in bed by then. And I just felt it's true. mad old. And First then, off, <laughs> and what time does the main event come on? Probably like, yeah, oh, it's so that's late. late. Yeah. We're, he's done playing Call of Because the card right? doesn't start yeah. till I think 9, so you got 4 or 5 fights. It's like 12.30. Brian's just catching up to this conversation because when we first started hanging out, this is what he wanted to do and I was like, bro, I'm like 40. I'm not yeah, sure. you're right. I'm start to watching that something at 11.30 yeah. at night. I, nope. That's exactly no where way. I'm starting to get. <laughs> but uh, to go support Mortgage Mike, because you know he's going to bed early because he wakes up, you know, he wakes up early to get those loans out. He wakes up early. I was going to make some joke about him stamping stuff in his sleep. Now I got yeah. an image of him having like night terrors with a stamp in his hand. It's Mortgage Mike stamping. He's approval. stamping crystal in her <laughs> sleep. Yeah. Just, go to, <laughs> just go to MMG, MMGloans.com and, uh, you know, go support Mortgage Mike. And then uh, Theron Smith over at Armadillo Home Warranty is giving that hard shell protection, uh, that one-page home warranty contract. You definitely want to go uh, check that out. And then Dana Wynn, Homeward DFW, the best residential property management company here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Almost missed out on an opportunity with the Eclipse, Eclipse due Eclipse. to my own kind of assured wrongness, which is <laughs> rampant in the world right now. Like. <laughs> I was so sure that you could not look at the fully totality eclipse without the glasses you that could. I almost made me, Victoria, and Noah miss it with my just straight up confident ignorance. ignorance. I was so sure that you were not supposed to look at it in totality that we almost missed it. Now, fortunately, Noah went rogue and so did Victoria because that's just who they are. And then I was secretly like flipping up the glasses like every two seconds to look at it that I got to see how beautiful it was. And it was absolutely amazing. But I was so confidently ignorant that you had to keep your glasses on. And then for anybody who did that, you noticed as soon as the, there was totality, yeah. you couldn't see anything. Right. Yeah. So like you had to take the glasses off to see it. But there was a good minute there where I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. How actually, I was always told that as a kid. I thought it would burn your eyes out. So well, it wasn't in totality. I guess I'm, I'm with him. I, I'm not glasses. I'm not as like he'll give his opinions in the moment. I was just going to let everyone go blind, but I had the same <laughs> moment of panic. I was just, see, I just didn't look at it until I saw everybody else doing it. But yeah, I guess I didn't study eclipses enough in school. I guess I didn't even know what totality meant until last Friday. Is that what it's like to live in one of these Northern or Southern places where they get like partial light for eight months out of the year? Because I will tell you that totality or right before it happened was the craziest right. feeling for it to be the middle of because we live in a little area where there's a bunch of woods and parks mm -hmm. and there's bobcats and coyotes. I am not kidding. As soon as that sun went behind, the coyotes woke up. Like all the animals yeah. had trouble figuring out what in the hell was happening. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty four cool. minutes. Yeah. They were just going and it was yeah. cool. I don't know if it's placebo effect or what, but I felt all of my energy change when it went dark. That fast. I went tired. I got yeah. tired. Yeah. I felt just like a I eerie felt like, energy. I felt me. like I was in a like, Final Fantasy when I was yes. a kid, bro. Yeah, that yeah. was what I pictured every kind of mystical sci-fi movie feeling like. And if there had been a fog that rolled across the ground, I would have been in like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it would have been the most amazing mystical environment I could have been in. Did you it, feel the temperature drop? It was, was awesome. Crazy. It was yeah. It was cool. We were talking about that at the table. It dropped like 15 degrees. Right? I would yeah. support a solar eclipse every day. Every day. Yeah, it's a good way to start it off. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the middle of like day. a rainy weather play. Just move to Seattle and just get yes. rained on for an hour every yeah. day. 
Yeah. Is that so, the same? All right, let's uh let's break this down a little bit. Um, and by the way, go to tourstudios.com. Go uh go build a podcast studio just like this. Jesse will do it for you. That's the best ad we got for you, Jesse. Well, I, so I, I can do that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh tourstudios.com. But you know, again, not to bring up what we're not supposed to be bringing up anymore. Everyone is everyone's freaking out about sales. So like let's figure out how real estate agents can eclipse past sales records. And none of this is shocking, right? That, that, you know, if we look at this as a three-step process, um, you know, Matt and I were on a, on a mastermind on Tuesday, just kind of, you know, hearing what agents are experiencing right now in the marketplace. And, you know, there, a lot of the clients are starting to bring up the commission stuff. So what are you hearing specifically? Because I, I mean, yeah, our agents are dealing with it too, but I guess uh, I, I know that for sure. You told the story last time on the podcast. You you lost the first listing. We did lose that, yeah, that, yeah. And so, like, but that guy was an asshole anyway. Yeah. Um, what are, are you hearing? More objections, questions? Like, what are you hearing? So it's it's more questioning right now, right? Because they don't know what the truth is. Yeah. You know, they're they're. I read something. I heard something, and it was. It's a little bit more buyer related at the moment um i think the conversation is a bigger concern on the buy side it feels correct. like yeah um if i were if i recall correctly i think nate had somebody that or maybe it was david uh that had someone that said if they had to pay their own commission then it was db it was yeah then it, they don't have the funds to do so yeah. um so there was definitely concerns from the buyer side of yeah. of of that angle um from the seller side you know it's still the same objections i mean Every every homeowner is is always looking to cut, right? And the first thing they're going to cut is like, I heard I don't have to pay a buyer's agent, so I'm not going to do it. Well, and look, let's have. I've had two. I've had a listing phone consultation today. That's an appointment tomorrow at eleven thirty, and I had a listing appointment yesterday at about six o'clock. I actually preemptively brought this up. Both of these listings are July listings summertime listings. They're going to be affected by the proposed change right now. I know everything's up in the air, but they're, they're going to be affected by that. I actually preemptively brought it up. And I will tell you right now, the one I had a phone conversation with today might actually be one of the first ones that might not offer a buyer's agency commission. And it wouldn't matter if they list at the time they list, they want to list. And the strategy that we discussed on the phone today, she may consider not doing it. And that's part of the thing that's been so difficult about this conversation on the consumer end is that the, I think the sentiment is that real estate agents don't want to have this conversation. I actually think there's sellers who are going to benefit from this and don't need to offer one if it's going to be not transparent. Like, And I'm not afraid to have that conversation with real estate agents either. Things Look, if the DOJ says that MLS commissions are not going to be shown on the MLS starting the middle of July, this is happening. Well, that's not, going, a DO, that's not the DOJ. That, or or if, that, the, if yeah. the settlement, sorry, yeah. if the settlement goes through and the DOJ doesn't change anything on it, there are going to be sellers who offer 0% commission and agents are going to have to figure out what that conversation looks like. I also think the rules are going to be a little bit more clear before July. We'll know yeah. what we can and can't say and what we can and can't ask for. And, and, and sellers will be able to very specifically say what they're willing to display and what they're not able to display. Yeah. I think that will all work itself out. But like, I'm not going to get caught in a situation with sellers who can benefit from a rule change because th that has been my message the whole time. The contract is my most powerful tool and I'm going to use to my client's advantage at all times, regardless of who I represent. Yeah. And I don't have any problem having that conversation with anybody. Well, you hit the nail on the head. It comes down this really the, the entire, you know, foundation for this is going to be strong conversations with sellers mm -hmm. and, for, for two different reasons. And I, and I think it hits, it will, it will take effect. Tell me if you agree or disagree. It'll take effect differently across different pricing or different parts of the pricing spectrum. Absolutely. So for example, right, we all, we, we, we can agree, right. That, that, you know, I made a point earlier that, you know, the age of the first time home buyer might increase, but that's because first time home buyers will still be the ones that probably struggle the most to pay an agent out of pocket. If, if that's, if that's what happens. Right. And so, in the same way that if I'm a, a listing agent having a conversation with a client at the table, and let's say this client lives in a home or lives in a, a neighborhood of 500 homes, and they back up to a super busy road, and all the comps, they're a four bedroom, all the other four bedroom comps are interior. But I've got a three bedroom comp over here that the average price per square foot is $10 less than all the other comps. Well, I know these are four bedrooms. These are three bedrooms. We do want to take this into account, though, because this is the only one that backs up to the major street as well. Mm -hmm. We've got to price it 
in accordance with the fact that you back up to a major street, right? That's that's doing your job as an agent to prepare your seller for the reality of what the market is going to yeah. throw at them, right? Where plenty of other agents would be like, oh, these other four bedrooms are here, right? It's not going to be reality when you go on the market. That busy road matters, right? In the same way that if I am a listing agent going to list a home that is probably going to sell to a first-time home buyer, a strong listing agent is going to explain how this purely you know, un, you know, capitalist style market works now and say the buying demographic that you're most likely to attract here is somebody who is just getting into their first home, does not have equity from a home that they sold, isn't rolling funds in, and probably is scraping by to compensate their agent. If you want to get the home sold more quickly, make it more attractive, and maybe even fetch a higher price, you probably want to offer X amount buyer agent yeah, commission. Here's now, how here's how I look at it, though, right? So there's going to be opportunity. The same thing if we go and look at it from a and and let's we slowly have to transition away from always talking about this portion of of the you know settlement and then the DOJ, right? So it's like number one, how do we build and continue to build and or or add on to our previous sales you know sales records mm -hmm. or or just history and. You know, we already know it's make more phone calls, you know, reach out to your sphere. Right. Do we believe Ryan Sirhan is business is going to drop much? Probably not, because no look, let, so. let's I actually think the luxury market is the one that's going to have the hardest time maintaining the actual percentage fee structure. I, I disagree. I, I don't know. I don't I, think I think that from well, the way I think they to say, his point, if that does happen, people with a brand like Sirhan might actually take it. I, of course. Yeah, but we're know. talking about the most popular real estate agent on the planet. Well, no, that, yeah. But that's where you start building those 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 micro celebrities in each and every marketplace. And yeah. so, you know, the way that I see it is number one, you've talked about maybe the, the age of a first time home buyer goes up. Maybe it doesn't because if you look at an opportunity homes sitting on the market over a certain amount of days, you know, that maybe in the past would seem longer. Maybe that becomes the norm. We start going back to 80, 90 days on the market, maybe 120, you know, 100, 100 plus days, which in Texas and DFW, that wasn't, that wasn't kind of an unforeseen thing where, where, you know, I remember back in, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015, a lot of times you're lucky to get an offer in 90 days. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you start looking at, all right, you have homes sitting on the market longer. Well, First time home buyer, you want to see where an opportunity is? Let's look at the stuff that's sitting a little bit longer. We can probably get aggressive on pricing. And that seller who is interested in selling, they're, they're, they have their home up for a reason. We're going to make our offer with them paying some type of compensation so yeah. that it's built in or that it covers this, my cost. This is can what a, a purely capitalistic market would look I like, feel like right? that and, and I feel that I feel like that's the easiest part of the conversation I think we're ignoring the difficulty in 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 the strategy of this because because what Brian I think was getting towards and I agree completely is the price points where the buyers are first time home buyers are more inclined to not have the funds are going to be affected by this change more than anything and probably be the ones offering the more offering more to the to the buyer incentive I'm stopping calling it buyer's commission it is a buyer incentive that's what builders call it that's what I'm calling it this buyer incentive is going to be offered at the, the, the more first time home buyer price points in whatever market that is. The luxury, while I also can sit online and argue all day long that people who have money will pay you more, there's also a point like I'm not going to sit here and say there's not a point of diminishing returns on that as well. There is a chunk of every market when we know this, where real estate agents don't do anything differently. This is a real complaint by the public that is legitimate, right? And then, and then there's a point where your Rolodex kicks in. Meaning you, your agent, your personal actual business kicks in. And if agents don't understand how to navigate that space in between, which is where 90% of the homes are sold, we're doing them a disservice. And that starts with two things. It starts with being able to properly convey the buyer rep and hopefully having documents state to state that will allow all of us to have shorter term reps that make buyers just on the hook for this one house for this short period of time. Because the real fear in this is that people who go to Zillow and get a six month buyer rep shoved in their face, that Zillow is going to have ironclad, by the way. Yeah. Right. They're going to figure that out. They never come back to the market and they buy a house with an inferior agent. And then and then this continues the process of real estate agents are worthless. I don't need to do that. Right. The, the, it, NAR has already drove the bus on real estate agents and left us hang out to dry. I am hoping to God the states and our brokers have something better than just sign the buyer rep because we need documents in place that make consumers feel comfortable 
about what they're signing, that they're not on the hook for everything, and agents be able to secure themselves for the work they do. That's the real problem and the real conversation, and that's what agents are really scared about. But well, the documents actually are good. It's no one, no one upholds the standards of the documents well, of buyers rep. So if yeah. you go look at it, you know, and this is this is at the fault of brokerages because here's what ends up happening. I agree. Is I sign Matt to a buyer's a buyer's representation agreement. Then Matt decides that he's going to somehow magically go under contract with on a house because he went to an open house and he doesn't know how he signed the contract and made an offer. But I call him up and I'm like, hey, let's go out looking at houses. Here's some here's some perfect ones. And Matt's like, I'm sorry, Nick. I don't know how this happened. I went under contract this past week and I went to an open house. I don't even know what I was signing. I've heard that. I don't know how many times. I don't even know what I was signing. Uh, yeah. And... So I'd be like, well, Matt, we had a representation agreement. He's like, sorry, buddy. Well, you go to your broker. The broker is the one that says it's not worth suing, you know, going after legally because what do they not want to have out there in the public eye? A bad rep. They don't want to have a bad representation. Let me tell you, you something. Know, you know, a bad view. <laughs> you do. That, yeah. That <laughs> they're out here suing or going after buyers yep. to enforce a contract. You're going to have to. The buyer's rep has to be as ironclad as the listing representation agreement. Now, it it has to be. Otherwise, what is the incentive of, of anybody to represent buyers if you can do all this work at the end? Because we're not going to an hourly rate. I did a video about this today. There, there's too many checks and balances and trust accounts and retainers and all these things the real estate industry is not ready to even remotely handle. And you can't just arbitrarily assign a dollar amount to each real estate agent, right? Like, like, yeah. You can't do that. So this is the structure for now. It is. And I, that's like the genie in the bottle. Like you can't put the genie back in the lamp genie in the bottle uh christine genie <laughs> back in the lamp part of this is like are there going to be more underrepresented buyers or less because i go back to before buyers agency was a thing you know we talk about i'm just kind of having this thought as we're saying this because i said even on previous episodes like if one party's represented the other party is going to want to be represented right but that actually wasn't always the case that actually wasn't the case until buyer. 90 1990 yeah. and so will we naturally gravitate back to an industry where buyers just aren't really ever represented in short term and, and you're going to make more money as an agent taking listings and then you know i i don't know how that worked back then how did people see houses and stuff you had to go had to, to the go office to the and get the key agent. we had to go to the listing agent though i guess <laughs> oh right? yeah absolutely that's what i'm saying it's like there were no buyer agents so you just went straight to the listing agent so if we go back to that then the action plan is simple it just we would revert back to what the industry looked like pre-1991 or 1990. And agents who take listings, who, by the way, kind of are the more valuable person in the party uh, or are the more valuable agent in the transaction, they're going to thrive. And people that are primarily buyer's agents will have a tougher time keeping up and doing as many transactions as before. Are listing agents seen more valuable now? But could we say, all right, with this change... You start documenting your journey as a buyer's agent, which very few people have done. Again, on average, we we are able to get you know four percent you know seller concessions. We're able to get um, even our commission paid. We're able to we're able to negotiate you know three four five percent on average off the list price. That's why you should hire me, and and it really goes into a deeper negotiation pool yep. versus right now. It's right now all it's looking at is. An agent, and we've heard this so many times. This this is the real estate industry's fault. This is no this, doubt. This is the buyer's agent who says, "Don't shoot me. I'm just the messenger." Yeah, right. And we've said this on previous episodes. So this is nothing new. That that you know we're we're shitting on our own our, on our own industry. But at the same time, we did this because we didn't want to be seen as salespeople. Yep. This brings back the sales the the yeah. the actual sales skill in negotiating and saying, "All right." Looking at comps, this is what we're going to offer. We believe that this is fair. You know, you can tell your seller to either take it or shove it. Yep. And we're going to go down to this one. And then it becomes, you know, what what do the buyers want to do? And well, then, and tough guy take it or leave it or sellers are going to figure out if their inventory really is what they think it is, right? Like that's the other this I don't necessarily mind this. And I don't think I'm gonna I don't think there's any reason to sugarcoat. If there's 1.5 million agents in NAR right now, th that number's going down. Like there's just like we're not here to tell every real estate agent you're going to be OK. What was going down anyway? Thirty three percent of you are in trouble. Yeah. Right. Like that is a fact. I, there's uh, there's no way I think going forward that you're going to find buyer like the, the, the buyer agent compression on this is legit. 
Yes. It is absolutely legit. If you tell me how you're going to have that conversation with a buyer and get them to agree to that price up front, let me know. And, and don't tell me it's your track record because you've never consistently asked buyers to pay your commission. Nobody in the country has done that. Let me ask you this. and Maybe I don't understand this part of the suit. So I, as a buyer agent, I wouldn't be able to collect a commission above what I agreed to my buyers with. Correct. But could I put in there that I can only accept a, so let's just say uh whatever throw an arbitrary number the fifteen thousand dollars whatever can i put in there that uh i as a buyer's agent can collect 15 up to fifteen thousand dollars in a com, uh in commission on this deal but uh right in there that the buyer is not responsible for any of it meaning that i would only get paid if i could get the seller to pay the buyer agent commission and i would only get paid up to fifteen thousand dollars that's where seems like a business decision i'm just saying if you, you want know? to put your money where your mouth is right as a buyer agent talking about we get four percent you know concessions we get the seller to pay commissions i guess what i'm saying is like I hear where you're coming from. I also see it as transitioning to an industry where I can also see buyers being like, yes, I, I, I hear you. And I don't necessarily want to take that risk because if you can't negotiate the commission, I don't want to be on the hook for it. Is there a way to drop the buyer rep where it's like, look, I'm going to put my money where my, my mouth is. You're never going to pay me. I'm either going to negotiate it with the seller and I'm going to get up to this amount or I'm not and I'm working for free. I think I think that's possible, and I think it comes with the biggest. No, fear Jared, how, that's not open ended. How hard does how hard does somebody work for it, right? Like I think yep. I think what comes what this comes down to, and where first time home buyers get really jammed up, and people who've never done this before, is that it, they're they're forced to take the person who will do it the cheapest. And 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 the U.S. government has proven that's not always the greatest thing, right? When we just contract stuff out, so it's like. Getting somebody who's newest and cheapest, I'm sure it works great for Joe Seller on TikTok who wants to argue, but it's not what's best for home ownership as a whole, I don't believe. Yeah. And, and the, here's the thing is we don't know what July 1st is going to look like, you know, and so right now we're 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 going off of, again, logically. People hate this topic right now. They do, they hate it because there's there's no it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. And, and as we look at this, you know, and we're trying to prepare for our business that hair off that. Um we're trying to prepare and, and continue to build our business going into 2025. Uh, what is, what does the last half of 24 look like? And, you know, first off, you still have to make, you know, make your calls. You got to build your sales pipeline because ultimately what we're seeing in the marketplace is there's, there is a lot of distressed homeownership starting to happen, right? They're going to need to sell. Yeah. So there is an opportunity for you to help them, whether mm -hmm. that is, whether that is helping them on the listing side, or maybe you can find a buyer and you can negotiate directly with the seller, there's going to be opportunity. And even at the the height of the Great Recession, we were we were doing 4.5 million um, sides a year, right? Yeah, but that was the lowest point. That was the lowest. That was the lowest. Uh, point. I think yeah. it was the lowest. Six point two was the highest. No, it was over six. Five was so let's just call it. We're in a range yeah. of between four four million to six point two mm -hmm. million sides. Yeah. That's not going to change. There's still going to be that opportunity. Now we might have less buy yeah. side deals yeah. and in I, there. Just to to sure, um, but even just to like harp on this one for a minute. There's yeah, there are people out there. I can't remember who. It's just like agents being like, well, people are just you know, if they if they have to pay their own agent, they're not just not. It's like they're just not going to buy houses often. Like no, trust me, people have to pay their own lawyers, and they still sue people all the time. Like that doesn't. <laughs> Just, you're just not changing the amount of transactions with yeah. this at all. By the way, Jared, I, I appreciate you commenting all the time. That's not, you know, we're spitting out in, you know, not correct information. The DOJ has reopened up. And so there actually is going to be, there could be a lot of change within what's going on with even this, the the commission settlement. So we don't know what July is actually going to yeah, look like. Yeah, nothing still has been set yep. in stone or ratified yeah. at all. DOJ is in coming fact, in this now. this is continuing to get more confusing. Yes. Yeah. So and we have to speak to something. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is the comments. This is the, the yeah. Yeah. topics going. Well, on. the way that I look at it again is is you know where the opportunity lies for for real estate agents because you know if you go go follow Matt on TikTok like you can see it in there. There's also agents that are coming in and saying, "Hey, I just got licensed. I'm I'm freaking out that this is a career change that I just have committed to, mm -hmm. and now it looks like um, it's not going to work out." Yeah. Well, and I think I think some of that is fear led by inaction. If if you if if we want to turn this, and I think we do, into something that is that is actionable, like 
understanding how to have a conversation with buyers right now is going to be a big part of everything that you've got to learn, right? Like there is a huge aspect of like um, approaching this buyer representation agreement, being able to explain it well, being able to explain to buyers just what they might run into and what they may not run into in addition to how they want you to handle it, not how you want them to handle it for you, how you want them to handle it and, and being open to making concessions because this is one of the things that I think has made all of us here really strong agents and every agent I know a strong agent. It's, it's not the agents who say I get 7% and I never deviate. It's the agents who are willing to make deals work, right? Those are the people who have longevity in this industry and they will continue to. Yeah. We both know those agents. It's right? ridiculous. I always get an extra percent. You don't do that many deals. Yeah, exactly. I'm tell you straight up. Yeah. I've, you know, we've done literally between three of us over probably 10,000 deals in our career. I guarantee you we don't get an extra percent on all of them no, to stand no. by that. None like, of my listings ever expire. It's because you don't lift enough homes. Yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> and like celebrity lawyers do stuff pro bono sometimes because it enhances their brand. Like yeah. you're just, they don't stand by that. Yeah. So, don't, not I, at all. I just look at, you know, right now, the, the opportunity is, is I don't, it doesn't change much when it comes to July 1st. If anything, this all gets ratified. July 1st comes around. We're still going to go help buyers. We're just explaining it. And we're just, again, we're putting in there the X percent, whatever that's going to be. We know that we're going to have to go after and try to collect that from sellers. Now, whatever, if DOJ changes it, then we'll just evolve with it. You know, will there be com commission compression? Probably in the beginning. And then it all levels out. Like this will have a leveling out. Like everyone who's talking about how this is, how this is bad and, and, that this will level out. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably not going to be as bad as we think when we look you know, past the 12 month mark. Yeah. I mean, well, I think there's two points to make there. There definitely will be compression and then it will level out because we just ran the numbers. 1.5 members of NAR against 4.5 million transaction sizes. It's, it's not enough. You know, there needs to be, unfortunately, there probably needs to be fewer realtors in America to handle the amount of demand. That's just simple. So as that happens, then this thing will start to level out again. And, and two, like, Again, in these types of markets, you will find a new normal. Market share will be gobbled up by the people that either work the hardest, get the most creative, or provide the most value. And instead of trying to be the smartest person about this lawsuit, right, we, we need to be thinking very deeply around what has our business and our habits around our business looked like up to here? Because we're so, of like, agents are, I know so many angry agents right now. Agents are angry like this is the thing that is going to be a big threat to their business. Not the five hours a day that they spend screwing around for the past 15 years when they could have insulated them. And, and still to this day, right? Like if you haven't been treating your business with the with with the amount of energy, maybe that best way to put it, that you should have been up to this point. This thing isn't the big threat to your business. It's the fact that you're letting this thing deter you when really, just like Nick says, go solve problems and you'll make money. And if we spend as much time as we know we need to trying to solve people's problems every day, it doesn't matter how much the industry changes, you'll still be valuable. Yeah, we're so focused on this. And I go back to the COVID market where yeah. during that time, think of it this way. Did sellers really need a listing agent during that, that market? In all reality, I, no, no, they didn't. Right? That actually was one of the most competitive listing agent markets I've ever worked in. Yes. And you didn't need it to get offers. You probably needed it to make sure to, make, to get the best one. <laughs> terminations were also super high back then Correct. as well. Yes. Right. Uh, we found as we processed the COVID market, what ended up happening, we quickly found how we adapted our value add. Mm -hmm. Our value add, what we adapted was, hey, we don't, you're not paying us for marketing. We're not paying us to get you more offers or, or over asking. We're now you're now paying us to really go through sift and sort and decipher which one of these is a legitimate offer or which one is just throwing this out here just which to get one's it. And about beat to beat you up and during the repair negotiations yes. for the same Do amount. Do they, they even have this over. money that right. they're throwing yeah. around? Yes, right. And so now this is on the opposite side on the buyers that we now have to adapt and evolve. That's all it is. Yep. And you know. It, it, there, there truly wasn't a huge commission compression even during COVID that realistically probably should have been. And so we look at this and say, is this the killer? No, this isn't the killer. 
because we go back and say, you know, even in the higher end markets, Kelderman, the 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 luxury properties. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to hire somebody because I don't want to do the work. I, and I and believe that. I don't trust, number one, I don't trust a listing agent. They're not, you know, it's just like going straight to the builder's, you know, sales rep. They're not having my, truly my best interest. And, and an attorney who is paid and can interpret the contract doesn't understand the market and what's going on. So I want to know, am I getting into maybe a, a neighborhood that is is trending upwards or downwards in value? You know, or where is the movement trend going that that maybe this would be a good investment over the next five to eight years mm -hmm. based on X, Y and Z? The attorneys aren't going to know that. And so that's where our value add as we as we continue to look at building upon this. The only way that we can do this is by making calls, reaching out our marketing, you know, getting with tour studios, building up your own podcast studio. And um, it's that becoming that celebrity type real estate professional. And not just be the the part timer, or what, if we go back and look at the report that NAR, um, you know, put out or whoever put it out yeah. through NAR uh, back in twenty twenty two or twenty three yeah. that we read that said that it was the marginal agent that was going that was really killing the industry. Yeah, and they were marginal the ones agent the forty nine percent that did one deal. Yeah, yeah it was zero to one deal. Forty nine percent of agents last year did zero one deal. That's what's killing that industry. This industry. And you can you can see it in consumer sentiment, right? You can tell that they're not hiring the most skilled agent. You can tell they're not getting the, the agent who understands everything. Because when you hear them describe their experience, you're like, if that's really what happened, you have every right to be pissed off. That's the most lackluster thing I've ever seen in my entire life, right? Or just opening doors, just showing up. And look, Brian and I ran a real estate team. You run a real estate team. I've seen th these agents do exist that they're talking about, right? Sure. Like, they absolutely exist. We've seen it and battled against them. Um, on their side of the fence and the other side of the fence. I'll be honest. I would say that, look, if we, I consider this the financial industry. I would not hire the majority of these real estate agents out here to manage my finances. That's fair. I agree. And actually to that point right there, you know, there's a comment. So like funny how we think uh, every year half the agents will leave. Yeah. Every year they do. Yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually the truth. Well, no, they're, just, they're, they're just they're just they're replaced. More people get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Place, right? like every year half the agents do leave this. Yeah, industry. I know Jared. Uh, Jared commented that last week yeah. or, or the week before about you know it's funny how we think that uh, half the agents will leave and that and it and it does and it doesn't, but it also doesn't cost very much just to have your license. They're actually what they may be just hanging around because it costs them three hundred dollars to renew. Yeah. So I mean, they actually are leaving the industry in terms of they're not doing anything. Again, forty nine percent of agents last year sold zero one house. That's them not doing anything. They still show up in broker agent count numbers. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so, and so the way that I look at this is again, your opportunity is is when people are fearful, this time for you to be greedy. Right. I think someone really famous said that. Nick Good. No, Warren Buffett. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he's done all right. He's doing all right. Something, yeah. Something to that effect. Yeah. Not as good as a lot of people in Congress with their uh, stock yeah. trades, but you know, he's pretty good. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, Buffett yeah. owns, he owns a real estate broker. I heard Pelosi's husband is killer at it, but it's like, fucking Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> which, one, which one? Pelosi's husband? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there is a guy. Like doubles up Warren Buffett. Yeah. There is a guy amazing. on X that uh, <laughs> follows all of the Pelosi trades and, puts it out he there. just puts them out there yeah. just follow them yeah just, just invest right behind them yeah I, mean, I did that one time when somebody told me playboy was coming back and then i bought something yeah. and later that day sold it i am down. brian still may own his <laughs> i don't sell anything i ride it out i'll give you guys insight just a little bit into my portfolio here today was bad because cpi was really bad i am officially down now this is when playboy got acquired we all had high hopes that the brand was going to get uh, revitalized i'm down 64 and a half percent on playboy in the last <laughs> i got year. in i bought and sold the same day and made six dollars <laughs> <laughs> better than what brian did Right. I was also down about 80% on Carnival Cruise Lines when I bought it right right during COVID. Mar April of 2020, I loaded up on Carnival Cruise, and I've been on that roller coaster forever, but we're way up on it now. That was Brian's stock quite, tip for me, too. Quite a roller coaster. Me and Jesse talk about Carnival Cruise Lines. I bought $100 of it in 2020 when Brian told me about it, and I still have that same $100. Of <laughs> well, I, I would sit here and, and you know, it's it's time for a cleansing. You know, and and Jared, first off, we truly do appreciate you uh, 
you know, being a participant the last several Absolutely. weeks. Like, I mean, that's, you know, we can't thank you enough on that. Uh, um, you know, from where I believe that we're going to go, it's, it's number one. I, you know, Kellerman and I were talking about this today. If you're, if you're thinking about getting in this industry, now's think the best again. time. No. <laughs> now's the best time. Cause you don't know any better. Right, yeah, you so get to come in with a clean slate and run your business however you see fit. You exactly. might have way better ideas than us. They might come we're in. We're jaded. And, yeah, they might be like, we're going to be those people. Back in the old days, yeah. I remember we were making three percent. Yeah, we just have years of bitterness we have to work through. <laughs> yeah, stuff to reinvent ourselves. It's like You'll when be. I first got in. I remember when I first got in, they had just made the changes where title companies and vendors couldn't pay for stuff anymore. And I heard about some of these parties that were going on. Somebody handed Nick a pen. He's like, "What is this horse shit?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> threw it, on the ground. it was right after, like I think, right when Respo was created or something like that. And you couldn't even give. They were afraid to even give pens yeah. away with, with stuff on it. Like, oh, that's a violation. Shit. But the year before, they were throwing some wild parties. Yeah. From that's kind of how this feels. Yeah. There's this faction that's like just still just rolling with. There's other people who's like, I, I'm not even gonna like hand out pens to people. <laughs> they won't even give you a calendar. You're gonna. What if we just somebody jump on, on TikTok own. the old, the other day and told me just because I made a salacious video about how I thought the funds flew through the buy, flowed through the buyer into the seller, they were like, this is an antitrust violation. Just you're, saying, you're telling you're telling sellers that buyers are paying the commission, and I was like, what drugs do you have? What's like what is happening technically right now? where does the dude. money come from dude, it's, dude, it's like i was like i'm not sitting down and listing appointments and then just trying to deke the seller right right and then then later on they find out that they have to pay money like no i explained the contract i just like that video was to get views and yeah. thank you it did the you know of legal expertise oh dude floats through social it's a media betty channel. boop style anime photo as their profile and their name is boombastic 3.0 i think it's bots dude i'm telling you this is this is <laughs> like foreign TikTok bad TikTok. actors they glom onto everything polarizing in america and try to like stir the pot there's no i can't believe real people i refuse to believe real people they like don't because here's the thing is i i have been getting absolutely like roasted on on TikTok and social yeah. media. I've had four buyer slash listing appointments in the past yeah. week. Not a single one. Like I have been the okay. one telling them what's going on, right. and I'm doing that from an abundance of of clarity, yeah. right? Like I want to tell them that, but most people don't have a clue, and that also sucks because that means yeah. the agents who are kind of part of the problem are going to be able to keep doing their shit. And I am I am with everybody else. I am tired of them. I'm not going to argue with those there. guys. I'm not going to argue with you there. Let me ask you this. What if what we if? no longer were making the, the type of, of money that we needed to survive in this industry? What would we uh, what would we pivot to? Fee picks. Well, that was real fast. <laughs> it, probably, it sounds like he's already pivoted to that. What do you think I'm building my TikTok up for, bro? <laughs> Only feet. Trying to sell P pictures of my 45-year-old feet, dog. I would learn Mandarin and become a bot, and then I would talk shit about whatever's going on in China and polarize them. I think, I, I think AI is... I don't know how I'd yeah. make money off of it. I know yeah. you were asking for goofy answers, but... like I wasn't asking for... For, for, the, for these guys sitting here, it's doubling down on the things that we've been building for years already. Yeah. yeah. Right? It, it's it's you guys with Deep Blue. It's, it's homeward property management. Jesse is absolutely ripping with tour studios right now right like like We're that the is the good thing is we all recognize vertical integration very quickly in this process and then found a group of people who wanted to do it and i do feel bad for people who are on an island by themselves a you don't have to be there are places to go where you can be with other people who are like working hard and and doing difficult things so keep that in mind but also like <clears throat> us personally we're just going to go build one of the other real estate ventures that we have. Yeah, right? like, I mean, seriously, and this is not to get, you know, I don't, I don't want to like make people feel bad or, or anything, but like, I have like several thoughts on this. One, this is super. Nobody's rowing the boat up to save you though. We've been saying it's that for literally years. what this it is. is mad. Right. Nobody's it's, coming to save you living it right yeah. now. Like it's not theoretical no. anymore. Um, you know, like, to answer your question as plainly as, as possible, we've already sort of been doing right we we have been uh forward thinking is not the best word failing forward enough in other parts of our our lives and uh businesses that you know at this point in time if if this was no longer a viable industry we would take a substantial pay cut but still be able to pay the bills and move forward and and, and if anything you know who knows where life takes you you might look back and say it's the best thing that ever happened to you because it, it gave you the it forced you to focus on other things we almost assuredly would yeah i mean we we fucking have to yeah right? and so you know we would go focus on on other things now i also believe that that this is 
not necessarily viable for everyone in this industry. And I was having this conversation with my wife the other day about several people in our world who have been through a lot in the last few years. We all know agents. Agent, I don't think there's an agent that hasn't been through a lot in the last couple of years. And I remember a time when I was doing really great in real estate when I first started. And I was so irresponsible. I had no idea a thing about money. I'd never had money before. Uh, I got a little bit of it. I went crazy. I spent all the money I had and then a bunch of money I didn't have, thinking that it was going to continue to come in. Uh, then I realized that like I am human just like everybody else. And when I have a lot of money, turns out like I don't get up with the same uh, ambition to go fight the world every single day the way that I do when I'm like fighting to pay my bills. Um, that's changed about me over time. But I remember how hard it was to claw my way back, to get like really irresponsible, get into debt really badly, and have to really fight my way out of that. And luckily, I learned a lot from that experience. And I didn't certainly, you know, it didn't become the smartest human in the world, but I think I learned one thing. I never wanted to do that again. Yep. Like, no matter what else happened to me in my life or whatever I did achieve or didn't achieve or anything in between, I just knew that once I got back to being in a place where I was like debt free and, and I, I had a little bit of money again, I probably overdo it in my life now, but I was just like, I'm never going to go broke again. If that means I have to like cut everything, I'll throw everything out of the plane before I crash this thing again. And I say that only to say, I, whatever happens in the future going forward, I will make a comment that I do believe one of the reasons that real estate agents are having such an emotional and more almost an angry reaction to the things that are happening right now. It is not just threatening the way that they do business and they'll have to kind of reimagine what their business looks like in the future. It's coming at a really bad time because for people that advise others on purchasing very expensive assets, real estate agents, in my experience, are relatively poor with their finances. Yeah. And so when you ask that question, like, what else will we do? I, I wouldn't, I don't worry about it as much only because I have massively downsized my lifestyle already. And I don't have to put my back against the wall. And I'm very blessed to be able to say that. And if there's anything actionable, you can take away, like, let this trying time because you will get through this. There will be brighter days. There's so much opportunity in the future. But just let this be the experience that when you start making money again, don't fucking blow it, man. Yeah. I just I know so many agents that are right now. They had great years last few years. I don't have any money. And it's like. That is the one thing about being a W-2 employee is you make the same amount every two weeks and you put the same away amount. I've, I know very few W-2 people that have worked at the same place for a long time that if they get laid off, they like they can't survive for like two months. I know very few real estate agents that when like the market turns, they're not freaking out. So it's like, days, yeah. you made half a million dollars last year. How did yeah. you, you know? You said, Brian, you said something a long time ago and, and I have such a low threshold for what I need to make financially to be happy, yeah. right? Like I could be pretty broke and be pretty happy if my life is stress-free. I'd probably actually prefer that. Yeah. But Brian said one time, he's like, I'm batting a thousand at living in a house every night. And I don't say that because you're shitting on people who don't. I'm saying that as like my whole life, I have been able to sleep comfortably and been blessed enough to do that. And I continue to believe that my ability will allow me to do that in whatever I take on. And I have such a low barrier for happiness when it comes to financial stuff that I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be OK, even if you cut my income in half, because I'm just going to figure it out. And I have the right people in my life and it's going to be all right. You know, I think everybody does, though, too. I believe so. this is one of those things that I, I mentioned a little bit last week on the podcast. Like we feel pressure to set these insane goals in real estate and do more and more and more every year. Like I guarantee you, your financial thermostat is lower than you think it is to find true happiness. No, 100 percent. I mean, the survey is like 67 or 75. I think they adjusted 000. it to 85. It's got to go up with now. inflation. Okay. I think but, they adjusted it, but it was 75 yeah. forever. Yes. Yeah. So 75 so, forever. Yeah. So again, it's yeah. adjusted with inflation. And who, I mean, who knows what they gauge that off of? I still think it's probably pretty close to true. It man. probably is. Yeah. It probably is. Well, look, Gary yeah. Keller has always said, and, and this has been true. And I was talking to a buddy of ours today, Joe Rosen. Um, and, you know, he, he was, he was saying, man, I'm just, I'm happy and content. And, you know, 
you know, maybe I need to press it a little bit harder. And I said, why? Well, you know, if you're happy and content, do, maybe you don't need to press it. Yeah. You know, and Gary Keller has always said, if you make $250,000 a year, you don't need for anything. No. Right. It doesn't mean yeah. you don't want for anything, but you don't need you don't for need. anything. It's going to cover a great house. You're going to be able to take vacation, yeah. um, you know, and, and have enough to put away if you're you know, financially responsible. Yep. But, you know, maybe that 250, that probably stays the same even with inflation at the moment. Oh, I would guarantee. Um, you know, because I see some of these these reports coming out that it says you need to make one hundred twenty six thousand dollars to buy a house. It's not necessarily accurate. It's right? not accurate. You know? One, it's just too broad to be accurate, right? right? Like yeah. it's like it's like saying you'll never own a home. Well, you know, somebody will. Like right. it's just yeah, yeah. It's that's you know the way I say it is like we have a lot of clients buying houses, and I know they don't make one hundred twenty six thousand yeah. dollars. I could just look at the statistics of what American households make, and there's just not that. You might maybe twenty five percent of the houses in America with two incomes yeah. uh, have more than 125,000 a year coming in. Like it's just not common enough for it to be true. The median household income is what? 70 something thousand. Yeah, it might be. It might, that might be up now too, but I, I doubt it. I know we did this one time and the, 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 it's 18% of yeah. Americans make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. As individuals. A hundred or more. Yeah. 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 A hundred or more. So I figured yeah. you go to 125 with a house. Maybe you're talking, maybe you're talking 40% of Americans. I don't Me know. National median household income is $74,580. Yeah. Um, so what, how many, how many, what's the percentage of household incomes who make over a hundred or hundred? By the way, that's, that's a not two, that many. 2.3% decline from 2021, which mm -hmm. was 76,330. So, well, that's interesting. If we counted all that COVID money as Ooh. income, that is interesting. Might have gone up. So, how many people make six figures? Problem. How many households? How many? Yeah, uh, how many households make more than a hundred thousand? What percentage in America? I think it's probably still in the U.S. Eighteen percent of indi individual Americans and thirty-four point four percent of households make one hundred thousand dollars or more. One twenty-five um, to one fifty. Just put Jesse just pulled it up. Nine percent. Yeah, nine percent. Why? Why is there a weird? Or no, it's nine million homes. Yeah. But why is there a weird amount like like it dips off from 125 to 150, but then jumps back up from 150 to 200? Like it's like two that's million more people who make that level of money. It's very interesting. I bet that's the the jump from single income to, to dual, in, like oh, dual yeah, income professionals, the household income, yeah. dual so, income yeah, professionals, that would be probably single people yep. down here. And then yep. it jumps back. That's up. exactly but what honestly, it is. I mean, even those numbers, was, regardless, like Nick just made great. Like, honestly, if you're making. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and you're not happy. Money is not your problem. Yeah, we're we're way above that. the conversation. We're happy. To, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> way above by that. the way, if if the real estate side went to just where we couldn't really make a living, just full time podcasters, full time podcast tourstudios.com. We are. I think make we could way more than that off this podcast. Yeah. Yes, we're exactly. So rich. Yeah, as soon as Theron sends this. in his payment, <laughs> oh. Oh, Theron Smith with Armadillo dot one. Theron always pays. Yeah. Yeah. Armadillo home home warranty. Armadillo dot one forward slash tour t o r e. Uh, get that hard shell protection on your house. That one page contract on the home warranty side. Maybe we'll just go. We can't sell solar because we've shitted on solar. Oh, oh so hard. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't even know. How I was gonna I'm not going to go knock on doors. Like, that's just terrifying. Like, I'm not doing that. Ever if I'm going to knock doors again, I got to have something better to if, sell you. If you could make $250,000 a year yeah. knocking on doors. No, Pharmaceutical rep, bro. I'll go knock on doors and sell you the good stuff. Uh, that's a legal pharmaceutical rep? No, you don't need to sell illegal pharmaceutical stuff to give them the good stuff. That's all prescription so all the other stuff. There's how plenty. Do you do, wait, you can door knock this? And sell no, you do knock doctors. Ah. That's how it works, right? Don't the reps just go make relationships with doctors? I'm not going to put myself I on think... on record saying what I'm going to say, Nick, but I don't think you're going to be the one doing no, a lot of selling compared to so. what I've seen. Plus, you're, yeah. you're too old now. Yeah, ah, that's it. Guys yes. get... Thought, Megan Fox was a pharmaceutical rep on an episode of New Girl. I'll just go ahead and leave that there. Yeah, I am probably past <laughs> the age cutoff and the wrong. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, yeah. wrong hotness. I would yeah, if we could figure this out. I would do a, a a podcast, a live podcast every day, news style. So we just create a real estate news podcast that goes live every day at 9 a.m. If only we had a place where we could do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where would we do something? You like know, that, we could Jesse? do this and just report on this commission stuff every day. Just every go live single every day. day and just 9 a.m. in real time. We, but we need this needs to be changed a little bit. We got to have actually we need a bigger space because now they I walk agree. around the new studio and yeah, they go over there. Yeah, and they like, got uh, all sorts of send fancy it to boards. Jeff. Yeah, yeah. For the we need to get one of those election night boards where like Carl Rove is pulling stuff around. I have nice. Like I have all a, sorts of I zooms client. in on this county in Ohio that's really important. Yep. I have a client who wants me to do that. So 
Really? At some point we will. Yes. We could we could do it where it's like like our listings that have offers on them. We could throw them up on the board and see who's like the most realistic or like <laughs> or like like when we go on buyers appointments. Like what are the odds that somebody gets it? Like we just have the public betting on whether Nate can take the listing or not. Oh, <laughs> online <laughs> gambling. Can lot. we do that? I mean, there's no rules. Look, we we're can. real estate agents. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We make the rules. Though. Yeah, we make but the rules. I also always wanted to start a TMZ style for real estate. You've talked about that a lot. Always. I think that'd be a lot of fun. There, I, I honestly think there's Inman. plenty of news. Yeah. We would need to get some boots on the ground in New York and LA where like the celebrity uh, yeah. realtors are and just harass them. I think that's what it's got to be because the, the thing, the way TMZ, the reason TMZ works is because it's, it's celebrities they're talking about. You got to have enough famous people in real estate that people care enough. Well, we or the yeah. stories right have here. to be wild. I mean, who 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 would we who would we? I'll go do something stupid. <laughs> yeah, Calderman. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Yeah, Candy's dirt. Yeah. Uh, oh, Candy's dirt. Yeah, you can pay her money for an article. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You could do that. We just start a. We'll do like a real estate, but it'll just be like the Onion. It'll be easier <laughs> to get content because none of it'll be real. We'll just no, make up man. fake real estate stories all day and do it like a live newscast. Actually, my kind of people kind of people fun. think that'd it's be real. Really, yes, that'd be super. I actually fun. saw a video the other day where it's like Mike Tyson beats Jake Paul. I was like, did that shit happen already? <laughs> no. TikTok is just fake news. Yeah, it's just honest. you just literally can make a page, make anything about it, make like an AI version of it, and just be like, here, this happened. I had to go <laughs> Google the fight. I was like, did I miss that shit? I get got all the time. Oh, you know, the headline is like so and shows shocking comments about whatever. I'm like, and then you click on it, and now your password. Like, I am now yeah, running around I'm the like, house. With our family being that video is not real. Yes. That video is not real. <laughs> Joe Rogan doesn't start a video by saying the scary thing is. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, that video is not real. I will say he's probably one of the most like copied names or like voices out there right now. Dude, he has oh, so dude, much yeah. content. So much, so much content out there. Yeah. The Joe Rogan of real estate. Oh no, down oh, he goes. No. Dude, I'd be way more down to just start a podcast like that. We could just come here at nine a.m. every day and just talk about whatever. And just I'm go inundated. Live all day. I'm inundated with trapped in the room with Matt and Brian right now. Yeah, there you go. Now, if you go to our memories for the past couple of weeks, of our, all of our COVID videos are yeah. our best work flashing out there. I honestly would rather do that. I'm getting tired of talking about real estate. I don't know talking about other room. stuff. And yeah. we just do that all day. People would be way more ent entertained by that, too. Well, let's get out of here today because I'm done with this. Yeah, too. Mortgage Mike, MMGloans.com. Just uh, throw all the we got. We're, we're going to be mortgage loan officers. OK, yeah, that's what we would do. That's what we'll do. Yep. Apparently, we're coming after them now. too. MMGloans.com and then uh, buy some rental properties. <laughs> get it over to Dana. Homeward DFW, the best residential property management company here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Homeward DFW.com and Jesse Tour Studios. Follow me um, over on TikTok. It's a complete shit show. Hey, thank you for watching. We truly appreciate it checking out another episode of the only real estate podcast worth listening to. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead, hit that, that share button, hit that like button, and hit the subscribe button. Right, We're dropping more stuff on YouTube constantly. If you're on iTunes, leave us a review, please. We're really, really focused on building up those reviews so we can get more searchable content on there. And if you're on Facebook, like everyone else is, go over and search the only real estate group worth being a part of. You're going to want to go join that group. I'm telling you right now, there's so much gold in there. So go join, share us on, on YouTube, and leave us that iTunes review, please. Go do it right now. We'll see you on the next show.